in this section, we'll work out the Hamiltonian equations for the dynamics of a system. Uh, the book has two different sections. 13.2 deals with uh, dynamics of a, of a one-dimensional system, and 13.3 deals with dynamics of an n-dimensional system. Uh, we'll just combine both of these uh, and work out the dynamical equations. It is important to recognize here that the dynamical equations, according to the Hamiltonian framework, are completely equivalent to the Newtonian equations and the Lagrangian equations. This is just an alternative formulation of the dynamics. Uh, Hamiltonian mechanics turns out to be the jumping off point for much more advanced formulations of uh, physics. In particular, it's a jumping off point for quantum mechanical systems. Unfortunately, we're not having time to get into all that here, and so we're really just introducing these ideas to lay the groundwork for future uh, studies uh, in your career where you understand the sort of deep connections of Hamiltonian mechanics to quantum mechanics. Okay, so recall the Hamiltonian is defined in this way, the sum over i, pi, qi dot minus the Lagrangian. And we worked out in the last section uh, that the, any small change in the Hamiltonian uh, has to be due to uh, changes in pi, which then you multiply by qi dot, minus changes in qi, which you then multiply by pi dot. And we can work out the Hamiltonian uh, dynamical equations very easily for, for the ith coordinate. Um, if we're only interested in changes uh, in uh, pi, then we'll take a partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to pi. Um, all the other coordinates uh, not equal to i are orthogonal, so a change in pi uh, doesn't mean that it means that there's no changes in anything else. And so the partial uh, uh, derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to pi, you can see from this expression right above, that's just going to be equal to qi dot. And likewise, you'll get a very similar expression for pi dot, except that there's a minus sign. The book go, goes at these uh, dynamical equations in a slightly different way, but it's totally equivalent. And so these are the key dynamical equations for Hamiltonian mechanics. Um, and this, there's this very deep symmetry between uh, changes in Q with respect to time and changes with P uh, with respect to time. Uh, you can see that they're basically conjugate uh, variables to one another. So you want to work out the time derivative of QI, take the PI derivative of the Hamiltonian. You want to work out the time derivative of PI, take the QI, negative QI uh, derivative of the Hamiltonian. Let's look at an example and see how this works out in practice. Okay, so as an example, let's consider the central force problem. So we have two gravitating masses, or sorry, two uh, masses that are acting, interacting together uh, with a force vector pointing between them. You may recall that our kinetic energy for such a system can be written as one-half the reduced mass for the system, r dot squared, where r is the radial distance between the two objects, plus r squared, phi dot squared. So that's our kinetic energy. For a central force problem, remember, our potential energy uh, just depends upon the radial distance between the two objects. Okay, So now our Lagrangian is just the difference between these two things. Minus u of r. And now in order to work out uh, our Hamiltonian equations for this system, we need to calculate what the generalized momenta are. And remember, the generalized momenta are this. It's the uh, qith dot derivative, qi dot dotth derivative of the Lagrangian. And so for pr, that's just going to be, you can see right here, there's only one place where there's an r dot. And so pr is just going to be mu r dot. Um, for phi, the generalized momentum is going to just involve this term here. And so we're going to get mu r squared phi dot. So of course this is the angular momentum we're used to seeing, and here's just that linear momentum along the radial direction. So these are our new, uh, these are our new generalized momenta, and so now we're going to use these to rewrite our uh, 
Lagrangian and then write our uh, Hamiltonian. So first thing we need to do is replace our QI dots. And so R dot is going to be, of course, PR over M. Excuse me, PR over mu. And phi dot, that's going to be equal to P phi over mu R squared. Okay, and so now we want to write our Hamiltonian as the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And so this is going to be equal to 1 over 2 mu times our kinetic energy, which is going to be P R squared plus P phi squared over R squared. You can see that just from here, these two expressions right here, plus the potential energy, which we've left unspecified, except that it only depends on the radial distance. Okay, so now R dot, according to Hamilton's dynamical equations, is just the uh, PR derivative of the Hamiltonian. And we can see there's only one place where PR appears, and therefore R dot, well, that's just going to be PR over mu, which of course we actually knew when we started. And then phi dot, that's just going to be what? The phi derivative, the P, P phi derivative of the Hamiltonian. And we can see that it only appears in one place, and that's going to be uh, P phi over mu R squared. And so this is an example where the uh, QI, QI dots aren't all that uh, interesting. We kind of knew them to begin with. But now we can work out the time derivatives of the generalized momenta. And this, this is where things get a little bit uh, interesting and useful. So now we need to take the minus uh, R derivative of the Hamiltonian. And what is that going to work out to be? Well, I can see an R dependence in two places. There's an R dependence here and an R dependence here. And so we see that the PR dot, uh, according to Hamilton's equations, is P phi squared over mu R cubed minus the R derivative, R der uh, partial derivative of U. And so what we see here are actually two terms that uh, induce uh, changes, time uh, time changes in the R momentum. There are forces from the potential energy, but then there's also this term here. This turns out to be the centrifugal acceleration, which we have seen before, just written in a different form. Let's look at what you get for the time derivative of the phi momentum. And so here we need to take a negative phi derivative of the Hamiltonian. And when we look, we see there is no explicit phi dependence. And so this tells us that the phi momentum, which is the angular momentum, is conserved for the central force problem. And that also we knew already. And so this phi, uh, p phi, is actually a constant that goes into here. Uh, and so now we have a dynamical system that we can solve uh, for uh, the dynamics of as a function of time. And this represents the general procedure for applying the Hamilton uh, equations uh, for a given system. So first you choose your generalized coordinates, the QIs. You write down the kinetic energy and the potential energies in terms of the QIs and the QI dots. Then, uh, having the, T, the kinetic energy and the, the uh, potential energy, you can work out what the Lagrangian is, and from that you can work out uh, the generalized momenta, PI. You convert all the QIs into PIs, then you write down the Hamiltonian, um, and then you apply the Hamilton equations. And again, it's not clear uh, from these simple examples why Hamilton's formulation is more useful than either the Lagrangian or even necessarily the Newtonian, um, but it has to do with this deep uh, and fundamental symmetry between these two uh, coordinates describing the problem.